He goes on. He says, constantly nourished on the words of the faith and of the sound doctrine. How can we be this kind of man that I'm talking about? How can we be such a servant? He says, a good servant. And then he says, sound doctrine. In both those cases, in the New American Standards, different words in English, but it's the same word in Greek, kalos, good. And what does it teach us? A good servant of Christ Jesus is the result of good doctrine. But not just doctrine. And this is somewhere where I want to plant myself for a moment. Dear brothers, I have spent 30 years reading men that I cherish, particularly the reformers, but mostly the Puritans. I love the Puritans. I study the I, I bring together passages of the Puritans. I, I, I love the Puritans. But they're writing about something. They're writing from what they know about a book. I need to read the book. I need to be nourished in the word. And you young men, listen to me, listen to me. I'm not talking about a 45 minute quiet time. I'm talking about if you're going to go into the ministry, you eat this book, you consume this book, you live this book. This book is everything. You bleed this book when they cut you. It's not just knowing. It's not less than knowing, but it's more than knowing. It is feeding upon the scriptures feeding upon the scriptures. You say, yes, the scriptures, scriptures, scriptures. But you need to understand, especially from Paul's prayers in Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3, he had no understanding of learning anything from God where prayer was not included. Son, get off the internet. Just quit it. Get off the internet. Get on your knees and in the Bible. Hours a day. And for all you young reform guys, the Bible consists of more than the book of Romans and the book of Ephesians. Read from Genesis to Revelation over and over and over and over again. I can tell you something. In most cases, if I have two men with the very same doctrine and I listen to them long enough, I can tell which one learned it from a systematic theology and which one learned it from scripture. Now you need both. Do not misunderstand me. But nothing trumps the study of scripture and nothing trumps prayer. Prayer. Not just intercession, not just crying out for the nations, not just crying out for your family. Communion with God. Remember, he is a servant of Christ Jesus. That is not just horizontal. It's vertical. Ministering unto the Lord. The greatest missionary movement in the history of the church in Acts chapter 13 occurred while men were ministering unto the Lord. Let me say this, your public ministry, and I say this in the fear of the Lord, your public ministry should just be the tip of the iceberg of your life. Below the water is a man shut up to God. While everyone else is playing, while everyone else is conversing, while everyone else is surfing the internet for the next great sermon, the man of God is on his knees. The man of God is in the Word. The man of God awakes in the night watch and he tarries there. 
The man of God doesn't just pray to intercede. He prays to see his face. He cries out, show me your glory. I cannot live unless I see you in clearer light.